Hello, this is Lorenzo here and you're watching KSP to Mars episode 30. And before we do anything we have to go over to the Astronaut Recruitment Center because we have Riches B. Kerman, he's our moon specialist. And today we're launching things that are not going to the moon. Specifically we need some low stupidity Kerbals because they will be our scientists. And we need a courageous one, that will be the pilot, I think. And we need, of course, well, let's just face it, we need all of them because we're going to go through them like a hot knife through butter. So we've got Nurim, Gurlon, Curlzun. I tried to say them quickly, but I failed immediately, and now it's a challenge. We've got Nurim, Gurlon, Kalzon, Milemon, Donmol, Henwick, Adam, Jack, and Kinemini. Kinemini. Kinemoni. This was a woman again. We have all these Kerbals, and they are going to pilot our rides into space. Let's have a quick glance at the lost roster. Not, We're not going to dwell on that too long, it's too depressing. Uh, we have a whole fresh list of available Kerbals. Right, what we're doing today is we're playing with nuclear reactors. We're launching nukes into space and if all goes well we'll do a lot of that. First up is a science laboratory, the, the KSP Interstellar Laboratory. Our first um, amendment module to the space station, the Tech Lab 2. And let's launch Gerlong up with that. Not the most courageous Kerman, but he's also not stupid, and that's exactly what we need. Now, what I want to send up is a science lab, a big nuclear reactor, and a generator, so that, uh, well, the labs have electricity and we have nuclear reactors in space, as has been promised to Kerbalkind since the inception of the space program. The problem is that nuclear reactors are very, very heavy, at least the big ones. So we can't launch the lab and the nuclear reactor at once, so we're going to do that in two launches. The first launch now will be just the lab. And it will have some radiators and stuff um, that will assist in nuclear power generation, but the nuclear power will go up separately. So let's set this as a target. And... Yeah, if we settle into a lower orbit, now I'm going to try and wait until that comes around. Uh, time warping with the rocket on the pad is a patently bad idea, as is evidenced by the explosion that just happened. So I'm going to try that again. Anyway, I'm going to launch the rocket and rendezvous with the station. Oh dear, this is a good still of Gerlong. Don't worry, Gerlong, we're going to reload the game and then you won't remember this incredibly traumatizing explosion. Anyway, I'm going to launch to the station. I will see you in its vicinity. So, here we are still in the lengthy phase of the launch of this rocket, almost through the first stage. But I just wanted to check back in with you and show you what a wonderful time Gerlong Kerman is having. He is freaking out. I don't know what he took or what kind of atmosphere he's breathing inside his spacesuit, but he is not having a nice time or he's having the greatest time of his life. Seriously, just look at that. Look at that Kerbal. What the hell? I'm gonna get more zero courage, zero stupidity Kerbals. <laughs> he has all the capacity to realize the precarious danger he is in and none of the courage to deal with it. It's a great combination. Look at that, look at the fellow. I can just imagine that screaming in the helmet. Boy, the people in orbit, they are sure to be happy to see him when he comes along. See you there. So, and here we are in orbit, approaching the Tech Lab 2. Now, my usual strategy for docking is to, well, take control of both vessels uh, in turn and uh, align the docking ports towards each other. Today, though, the Tech Lab 2, it doesn't have a control uh, part. The, the laboratory itself, cannot you cannot control a vessel from that. Uh, so I had to fly around it until I was properly aligned, which I think worked out pretty well. And the camera is not really cooperating, but... Well, I think we will be observing a successful docking soon, and I even equipped this vessel with an RCS um, pod to make last-minute adjustments, fine-tuning the orbits there. Let's have a, see, have a look at translating that. What I do with docking is here I, I align the, the heading marker with the center of the target marker and I use translation keys to keep the... Um, I use WASD to keep the, uh, the, the point pointed at the docking port and I use the translation markers, the IJKL, to keep the velocity vector oriented on the center and then with that I hope it works and when I'm close I um, reduce speed a little bit with 
N. So I think we're about to have a successful docking here. It's wobbling a little bit and there we are, docked. So what we have now here in orbit is the Tech Lab 2. And this fuel ta this fuel tank uh, brought up with the second lab that can actually generate science points for us. This will be shot away into space. We don't need this one anymore. So we're going to transfer the fuel into this tank, which conceivably could be used to boost the assembled station at some point into a higher orbit. But that's for the future, that's not for today. Today we're going to have a look at our brand new station, amazing as it is. So this engine can be decoupled. Let's have a look. Decouple that, bye bye. We don't need that anymore. And what, do you, what we have here now is a stock Kerbal Space Program laboratory massing 10 tons with a lot of science experiments on it. Does this have the Gravioli detector already? If not, then I forgot... Ah, uh, no, this is the accelerometer. If this does not have the Gravioli detector yet, I forgot to stick it on this part. Yeah, no Gravioli detectors here. Uh, so that's gotta... I'm gonna have to make a mental note to, well, bring them along. This has a command pod, so this is now controllable. And this is the lab from KSP Interstellar. This has the interesting... Uh, options. It has begin research that makes science points for use in the R&D building. It has reprocessed nuclear fuels that um, fixes spent reactors. We don't have a reactor here yet, but that's of course on the way. And we can make an antimatter factory. Of course, we can turn the lights on, the most interesting feature, feature of all. I stuck two antimatter bottles on this uh, space station. That's what makes it uh, heavy. These mass three tons each for all the magnetic confinement stuff, I suppose. And of course we have here heat radiators. They're not quite needed yet because we don't have uh, the... Well, they deploy right fast. They're not quite needed yet because we don't have a reactor online yet. But as soon as a nuclear reactor is installed on this station, um, these heat radiators will be needed. Now the next launch will plug into this docking port here and attach said nuclear reactor with the generator. Because you will notice if we, for example, ask the thing to begin research, it will, let's see, it just won't do it. Oh, not enough crew it has. So first we need to put some crew in it. But I can tell you already, it won't do it because there won't be enough energy. But we have our Kerbal here. He's not smart, he's not courageous, but um, what I meant to say is he's not stupid. So he is smart, but he's not courageous. So he's going in the laboratory. He was uh, terrified the whole way up, I even showed you. Um, but against all odds, he did end up making it. So I'm not going to tell him that's an antimatter bottle. He would freak the shit out. And I'm going to grab one of the Kerbals from this laboratory. It's unfortunately that it's now becoming uh, night. We can get Corky Kerman from that lab, which has so far been pretty useless. But of course it serves as a nice uh, starting point for our space station, which will soon be nuclear powered, up and running and large. The problem is, um, and that's also why I'm sending these, uh, why I didn't send the nuclear reactors immediately, is that nuclear reactors are quite heavy and um, our heavy lift capacity is quite sorely lacking. Ironically, um, paralleling real life, we have many interesting technologies uh, we have many interesting technologies to use in space, but it's not a trivial matter to launch them up there. So we end up having to build our station in many different pieces and eventually it will work. But um, making a big spaceship with lots of nukes, uh, nice radiators, advanced propulsion, not something we can easily launch. So that is a bit of a problem. So now I have two people in the science lab here and I would like to do something with that. Oh, are you telling me it's now not controllable because there's no one in the command seat? Fortunately, we have a spare Kerbal. Bobcot can go into the command seat. Wow, this is finicky stuff. Of course, our scientists, they can't work independently. They have to have someone in the, um, in the command seat telling them what to do. So I think now I should be able to, well, talk to my scientists. Yes, here we go, and ask them to begin research. It tells me... They have zero megawatts of the requested five megawatts, so they make zero science. Same thing with antimatter factories. It has zero megawatts of the requested 5,000 megawatts, so no antimatter. So the next step clearly is to launch a nuclear reactor here, so we can do uh, start start the lab generating science. We have several tens, um, 
with a uh, reactor is capable of several dozens of megawatts so that's enough for starting research but nowhere near enough for starting antimatter production for now though the station is looking fairly badass and what we did do is we brought some oh are you kidding me now we need two more Kerbals to operate this lab to upgrade the readings before transmitting or of course shuttle them back. Well that's not something I'm going to do, I'm just going to transmit it back anyway. Now we have antennae so to transfer our um, science data back. Unfortunately at this point uh, we have quite a low amount of science data. The reactor is going to sport uh, gravioli detectors and maybe an infrared telescope even, although that could conceivably be something for a later module. We have docking ports here on the side, so science modules can dock here. And on this side we are going to continue putting nuclear reactors and building the interstellar bit of our lab. So that's all we have for here. Returning to the space center and what we also unlocked in the technology node yesterday were electric generators and plasma thrusters and I made a space probe out of those and that's something that's going to be launched now as well so hold on to your horses and let's play with that stuff and I call that the generation 2 probe the launch will look the same as every launch so far has been so if you haven't seen that and would like to scroll back a few episodes I think around 10 or so I'm developing this launch vehicle and check back when I'm in orbit, which for you will be a few seconds, and for me it will be about 15 minutes. So, see you then. And as promised, here we are with the special Mercury probe in orbit. This is a Generation 2 interplanetary probe ship. And the upper stage of our stock launcher has put it in this orbit. This is a wider orbit than any upper stage has ever put it. And according to Kerbal Engineer, we have 8.8 kilometers per second of delta V left from this small 6-ton probe. Let's first separate that upper stage. We don't need that anymore. And let's have a look at this probe, shall we? It has a stay Putnik core with some science experiments, two goo canisters, some heat radiators, and this is all contained around, that's what we have here, a electric generator, a Brayton cycle gas turbine, and that's mated to a small Kiwi nuclear reactor tucked inside here between all those experiments. Now this combination weighs a few tons and supplies power for all these six ion engines so let's go ahead and throttle up those and there we are ion power for the masses and is that actually working yes it is working albeit ever so slowly now we have a nuclear reactor here going online and we can see our waste heat is slowly rising that's why we have the radiators here let's go ahead and deploy those and it is my opinion that they look badass, especially as compared to solar panels. These things look a lot better than solar panels. Of course, they try to arrange themselves perpendicular to the sun, so as to catch as little extra heat as possible. Here, where it, uh, the base that all these ion engines are mounted to are, is a science container itself. Well, we can fire this off only once, so we're definitely not going to do that now. The thing is, um, I opted to use ion engines and I took along three xenon containers per engine. This gives this craft about just under 9 kilometers per second of delta V. The nuclear reactor keeps it powered up no matter what, whether it's in the shade or somewhere else. Ah, look at that. Some science to beam back to Kerbin already. Not too much, but every little point helps. In the KSP interstellar nodes are a lot, a, a lot of various engines that are unlocked. One of the things I can build now is a plasma engine and coupled with liquid fuel that gives an ISP of 11,000. That's better than anything we have. The problem is the thrust that is derived from such a combination is dependent on the megawatts of power that are input. This nuclear reactor produces 1.5 megawatts and the electricity generator is 30% efficient or even 26.5% efficient, so we get um, about two-thirds of a megawatt out of that. 
excuse me, one third of a megawatt out of that approximately. Uh, not a huge deal. The larger reactors, they give me more power, of course, but are also proportionally heavier. So I could build a craft with 11,000 ISP, sure, but then the burns would literally be measured in days, even at four times time acceleration. Much as I love you guys, I'm, I'm not prepared to do that, and of course it would mean that the videos um, could not be maintained at a frequency of one per day, because every burn would take more than a day, so clearly that's not viable yet. The plasma thrusters, we can start utilizing those when um, and if we unlock the more advanced power technologies, so antimatter generators, fusion generators, or even upgraded fission generators. They have an upgrade hiding away in the tech tree. Interestingly, in that same area where the uh, bigger, better fusion drives reside, uh, there are also the mainsail engines that are required to lift more of this exotic payload into orbit in one go. This space probe weighs about 6-7 tons, it's fairly light, but still the booster that Putazero only gave us an extra 2 km per second of delta V as compared to a 20-30 ton payload. Of course, that's because even though this uh, probe is like half or even a third the weight of a typical payload, most of the weight of that booster is the booster itself. So sure, reducing the payload is going to help, but it's not going to like double the efficiency or something like that. It is interesting that with this propulsion system we eke out just under 9 km per second, where only a very small amount of the probe is mass, uh, is fuel, but a very small amount of the probe mass is fuel. That's definitely good. The ISP of these engines is 4200 um, and the nuclear engine ISP is 800. Then again, most of the mass that we're taking along is power generation for these ion drives. Now I think I could easily uh, pile on another 7 kilometers per second by adding three more xenon canisters. Um, so that would in upgrade the viability of something like this as an outer system probe. For now I just wanted to have a flight ready nuclear reactor powering a probe. This one is set to go to MOHO or of course Mercury. That planet, let me have a look at it in the map view, that is this one here and my rough calculation, in other words estimating with the maneuver node system puts it at about seven and a half kilometers per second of delta V to get there from here and we have that in this probe if only just. If we take a quick look at the Kerbal alarm clock we can see launch windows are coming up for MOHO or Mercury and Joule or Jupiter and also EVE otherwise known as Venus. I'm going to go ahead and launch a probe for Joule as well. Venus I'm not quite sure yet about. Probably going to shoot one off there also. I mean why not? It could be these kinds or m might experiment some more and make different designs with other equally exotic technologies. I think it's safe to say we're definitely entering the fun bit of the uh, KSP Interstellar mod pack and that's a good sign. For now I'm going to leave this episode uh, where it is. In the next episode we will continue building the space station by attaching nuclear power and electricity generating capacity and we will shoot off another probe and possibly do some time warping to have one of these probes um, arrive depending on uh, how far out that is going to be of course. We could also go to the moon and try and set up some kind of base there maybe with the IR telescope do some telescope um, while well, stargazing from the moon that's also something that's uh, being done in real life not from the moon but from space of course so for now thanks for watching i'm lorenzo check back tomorrow to see what happens with these probes the space station or otherwise exotic technologies um, i'm signing off now hope you have a good night or whenever you happen to be watching